It's come to our attention that the Allied forces um, all around the world, in active service, fighting for their country, even though they're in danger and they're missing their loved ones, they all have one thing in common. The love of one man, the respect of one fellow soldier. He's a civilian, but he's one of them. He is, to some, a, 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 just a, a little bald-headed fool. Carl Pilkington. Carl, what do you think? What do you think of this? It's an honour, isn't it, to do this? Yeah, it's all right, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. OK, there's people out there, Carl, they're fighting in Afghanistan, Iraq, all over the globe. They're in a dark building. They're not breaking radio silence. Morale, often low. There's one man they can turn to to cheer them up. Come on, they want some words of encouragement, some words of wisdom, something to keep them going, a message to the troops. Come on. Go, Carl. What you're is like, it? You're like their Winston Churchill. I don't know what to say to him, really. Do you know any soldiers? Well, yeah, my brother was one, wasn't he? Yeah, mm, but he got kicked out. Why did your brother get kicked out of the army? Um, well, there's a few things. I, I think you get a few chances. I think the final straw was nipping out for some fags in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> Just think of that! Just think of that! Uh, Amazing. And it's... Just see that, just a little corner shop, just like uh, things shaking, jumping off the shelves, and they're going, what is this? What is going on? 20 waffles, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's loads of things. It was that. Um, what else did he do? I think the sergeant wasn't happy that my mum wrote, wrote the sergeant a letter um, trying to get my brother out of going to Northern Ireland. Yeah. What did she say? I love this. What did she say? Wow. She wrote a letter. Like, oh. trying to get him out of PE. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. It was all Let's like... Not forget, a cough. Let's not forget, your, your mum is a person who put Tipex on a spider so your dad couldn't kill it, so she knew it oh, was yeah, the right so spider. In up. case your dad killed a real spider, then thought, I'd better replace it. <laughs> I mean, it's no, it wasn't, it wasn't just that. That was, that. It was Tipex, so that when my dad was vacking up, or my mum was vacking up, it stood out. It wasn't like it wasn't like branding a sheep, right? It was there, so it stood out because they used to have like, um, what's the name, L laminate flooring, right? And my dad changed it to darker carpet, so right. all of a sudden you couldn't see it anymore. I've never heard anything like this. I don't remember this story. You, uh, no, she she no. had a pet spider. What do you mean? It she was just a, a spider. spider. Yeah, he kept a, she kept a spider. They had a spider, but then it became a pet because it was there all the time, as opposed to just getting rid of it straight away. <laughs> But, you know, because you didn't clear it away yeah, straight away, house. suddenly it's a pet. It's, it's... Yeah, it's a house spider, because they live in houses. You make them welcome, they get rid of other little bugs and termites and stuff. My brother's left home, I've left home, my sister's gone. It's something for my mum, isn't it? She's got a budgie. There's only so much you can do with that. It's not as free, is it, as a spider? Right. So she just looks after that one. They oh, I'm for about so eight lonely. Years. I'm bored of a budgie. Get yourself a spider. <laughs> anyway, they live in holes. that's a different thing altogether. She just wrote to the sergeant and said, um, just sort of, you know, look, I didn't want him to join the army. It was his dad. Uh, he didn't get a job. His dad told him, if you don't get a job, you're going to join the army. Mm. He ended up joining. He's joined at a bad time. He hasn't had enough practice at this yet. <laughs> Can you just let Surely him that's for them. Enough Surely that's for them to decide. <laughs> yeah, no. she's on there going, he can't shoot for time. Yeah. He, he was all right about it. The only thing that really annoyed him is my mum started off the letter by saying, hello, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Not appropriate. And, um, <laughs> and he called back, though. He did call her and said, look, you know, I don't appreciate it being called Chuck and stuff, but I've got you know, you know, a lot of mothers are in the same boat. Sorry, he actually mentioned don't call me Chuck. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he brought it up. Because it's all about respect, isn't it? And Well, she's a civilian. Yeah, but I suppose it's, it's respect still. He's putting his life on the line. Someone's saying, you know, all right, Chuck. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so he phoned back and he said, presumably... Well, I mean, if I was him, I would have... Not only would I have sent him to uh, Northern Ireland instantly, yeah. I'd have put him in the most dangerous spot. Yeah. I mean, as punishment. To get your mum to write a letter... No, 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 no. He didn't ask my mum to do it. She did it off her own back. He was probably horrified, wasn't he? Oh, Oh, wow. that bit... Imagine that. The sergeant made you go... Attention. Got a little letter here. <laughs> Let me read it to you. <laughs> Hello, Chuck. <laughs> Just reads it out. <laughs> and he goes, Pilkington, come here, you horrible little man. 
Imagine him reading out in front of the troops. I remember sort of looking up to him, thinking, oh, that's, he's, he's in the army, I want to do that. He used to come home quite a lot, but he used to do me dad's head in because he'd turn up with, like, a wagon with, like, a load of his mates in it, just turning up on sort of, you know, we didn't have any notice. Just turn up and he'd bring them all in. Come on, he'd be drinking my dad's whiskey, he'd kick off, my dad's saying, get out. Mind the spider. And, uh, Don't tread on the spider. <laughs> yeah, he used to just turn up with, like, half of F troop. And they just tack over the house. <laughs> really? and my dad used to be on night, so he'd hear all this going on, come down and go, what's going on? Get out! And he's going, oh, come on, get out! So it'd sort of kick off a bit, I'd see him for a few minutes, and then he'd drive off again on the truck. Not it, a model soldier, then? Uh, well, what's, what's a model soldier? I don't know. I mean, I, I always thought it was good. When I was younger, and, you know, he joined, I, I was like, oh, I'm going to do that when I get older. And my dad always said, you won't be able to cut it. He said, you can't do it. Oh. And I said, no, I can't. I can't. Look how good... Cos I used to make my bed really neat. Right. So it's mainly housework you were good at. <laughs> yeah. You're probably better off as a mum. No, no, no. I, I, it was like... Cos it has to be immaculate, doesn't it? They look for no creases and that, and I yeah. was a bit paranoid with my bed. Just with the with the duvet and that. I used to... Duvet? Do they have duvets? Well, don't... I don't know, but just making the bed pride in appearance of, of yeah. the bedroom. Yeah, it's all about discipline. Once, it's all about, once yeah. I made it, no-one could sit on it. I used to get all all stressed out and feel sick if someone came in and sat on my bed after I'd made it. So they don't be coming in. And it was annoying, because that's where the CV was. So everyone used to come in, so I would go on the CV and sit on my bed. They'd be going, don't sit on my bed. Made it. Right. Uh, Why so... did you used to feel sick? It was a bit of a thing. I just OCD. didn't like it. A I, little I, bit of, I, yeah. It's like, I've, met, I've gone to the trouble of making it. Why have you just come in and sat on it? I wouldn't have made it. Yeah, but, what, but hold on, though. You, you do that in the army, Sergeant Major comes in and goes, here we go. And he just, he does it for a laugh. He turns over your bed, he pulls out your locker, he gobs on your shoes, right? He goes, start again, you can't. What are you going to do? Going to be sick? No, you're going to go, yes, yeah, Sergeant Major, I'm going to start again. <laughs> no, I'd say, why, why did you do that? I'm missing home as it is. I'm stressed out. I'm just trying to make me, me, me surroundings as nice as possible. Teddy's on the floor. You keep coming in right. and messing with it. Can you not do that? Who are you talking to, you little bold can? Maybe my dad's right then, because he said he said that. He, I mean, that my dad sort of said the bed making's all right. He said, but you're not that good with laces. <laughs> wow! Did you have to tie your laces? Well, I've just, uh, just never been that good. I can tie them, but they never sort of stay tied for a long time. I have never seen him tie his laces. I've realised that. No. He always comes in. Are Does Suzanne little, do them for is you? Is he a little just... mank, one of those little um, mank trainers where they're all tucked in, where you don't see the laces? I tend to just get a good knot on them and then just leave them and kick them off, and then they're tied permanent. So you've got slip-on, laced-up shoes, basically? Yeah. I don't like laces. Well, they can't be tight I don't understand enough. why laces are good anyway when you're in the army, especially with boots. You have boots with like about 60 holes in them. If you're in a rush, if you're in bed, you get out of the bed, you make the bed, the sergeant comes in, rips it apart again, he's going, there's a war, and you're going, stop messing with the bed. <laughs> and then I'm there trying to put my boots on. You've got 60 laces. I don't understand why Velcro hasn't been used. Velcro is ideal for a war situation. You're in bed, woo, siren goes off, you jump out. Why do you want boots with loads of laces? Well, that's the thought for the, uh... <laughs> if again. there's any top brass listening. How would you cope, Carl, in a war situation? Ignore the, 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 the mechanics of being a soldier. I'm talking about the fear. I mean, these men and women are brave beyond compare. Mm. Constantly under duress. I was told he had good pain threshold. By whom? Um, a woman at that face rub place I went to. Right. She, uh Because they ask you when you go in. She said, what's your pain threshold like? I said, I don't know. I'm trying to avoid it. She was going, yeah, but, you know, would you say you're very, very good, medium or bad? I can't imagine you getting hurt much because because there's the signals to the brain. You've got, you know, it just, it's just dulled, mm. isn't it, with you? So you don't really... Yeah, but then Suzanne always moans at me when I'm going, oh, God, my wisdom teeth is aching. She's going, oh, shut up. She's saying, you haven't got any wisdom teeth, you dopey cat. <laughs> no, she just always goes, I had it and I didn't make a fuss, but it's one of them things that you can't get through to people pain, isn't it? Yeah. And they don't know what your pain threshold is. So, like I say, I've got brilliant pain threshold. I'm saying my tooth's hurting. She's saying, oh, shut up. But she doesn't know. I wish you'd... I think I've talked about it before about giving someone the pain that you've got. So you go, there, have a feel of that. I'm yeah. in agony here. Yeah, but you've made it up that you've got a high pain threshold. This isn't... This, no. this is not a scientific No, the woman proven. told me. The woman told me. Well, does she, she know? Because I haven't got to it yet. <laughs> when I had the face rub, yeah. she was sticking electric into my head. 
<laughs> I should go in. <laughs> what sort of place is this? This wasn't a spa. No, it was. It's what Jesus doing Christ. What, she, she, I don't know. So she just plugged something into the mains. She plugged something in and rolled Did it. Did she over. have an assistant called Igor? Was it in a castle in Bavaria? She plugged this thing in, rolled it over my head <laughs> and said, is that hurting? I was going, no. And she went, all oh, right. And she said, and then by the end of it, she said, look at that. I had that on full. I said, what is it? She said, it's an electric current. That does something. I was going, really? That does something. She's a scientist. <laughs> and, um, yeah. She's a pain yet. She said, she said, no, when you fill out that form, just put you really good at pain threshold. Put you really good at pain. You're going to come again? Well, yeah, 50 quid. I said, uh, <laughs> right, let's try on your testicles next time. <laughs>